What are some unethical and possibly illegal life hacks? When we were teens, we used to go to the movies on busy nights in large groups. Two people would buy tickets, enter the theater. One person would head back outside with the two stubs and bring a third person in. Third person would exit with both stubs and bring a fourth person in. We sometimes repeated this until we had over a dozen people in the theater for the price of two tickets. The ushers never saw the same face more than twice. Did this in college. Buy all your textbooks and keep the receipts. Return to the store later that day or a few days later. Most bookstores don't give 100% refunds after the first week. Grab the book you bought off the shelf, take the book to the cashier and tell them you want to return it and show your receipt. If they require a reason, say you drop the class or are sharing the book with a friend. Get money back and leave. Never paid for books and got money back on resell at the end of the term. Most cashiers they have, especially at the beginning of the term when you are buying books are temporary. Student workers who don't give a shit most of be time. Edit. 1. Guys, I know it is fucking illegal. The thread title asks for illegal life hacks. I'm following the mantra of the thread. 2. Yes, you could buy the books and the photocopy the book or the pages you needed and also return. Cam scanner app is your friend. Got a cracked windshield? Drive around on the highway for a bit and find a rock truck. Call the number on the back and tell them a rock flew out and broke your windshield. Sometimes they will pay for a replacement. If you see a baby with candy you can take it and there's literally nothing they can do about it. I went to a university where the student-to-parking ratio was extremely terrible. You would basically have to show up two hours before class, if you lived off campus, to get a parking spot. Personally, I lived on campus, so for me parking wasn't that bad unless I left the campus before 5 p.m. So every time I walked to my car later in the day, I noticed that a parking spot right in the front, prime piece of parking, always had an orange cone on it. There was nothing wrong with it, it just had an orange cone. Later that semester I had to go get something out of my car in the morning, and see a guy drive up to the cone spot, get out of his car, put the cone in the trunk, and proceed to park. Turns out this guy has been doing this for months, using the cone to, reserve, his spot. Apparently no one ever questions or moves the cone when he places it back on the parking spot when he leaves. I have one like this. When I was in college, they did a good deal of construction around campus, as is pretty normal on college campuses. My buddy used to keep a cone in his trunk and park up on the curb and simply place a cone on his roof. Apparently the cone on the roof stick was an unofficial sign that this car belonged to a contractor construction person and as a result, he never got a ticket. He did this for nearly two years and then graduated. Orange cones are objects of great power. I wear one on my head during interviews. I think they fear how much power I have and don't hire me. If it looks like you belong, no one will ask any questions. A clipboard and a button-up will get you through most doors. And in other news today, a man was arrested wearing nothing but a dress shirt and carrying a clipboard. If you don't look like you belong, pretend like you're on the phone with someone and walk with purpose. Works every time. I can't tell you how many times this has worked for me. Phone to your ear or having papers in your hand walking fast purposefully gives everyone a great impression. It also makes you look busy at work without having to do anything but walk, lol. If you steal from a beggar and he tries to get it back, the police are less likely to believe the guy soaked in his own urine. This is fucking evil, but probably true. Even more so when you urinate on him to cover your tracks. Depends though. Many beggars have drug problems. You can bet a crackhead beggar won't call the cops. He is just going to go full crazy on your ass. Is the five dollars that beggar spent all day trying to get worth being stabbed in the back with a rusty screwdriver? Beggars are already at a low point in their lives. It's the nice to mess with them. When someone says, Have a nice day, don't say, You too. Hoard everyone's nice days until you are immortal on nice days. Other people's nice days. If you want more than one glass of water but don't have any more water, just drink the first glass twice. In a fist fight, if the other guy goes down, immediately get on top of him, wrap your non-dominant hand around his throat, and lean into it with your body weight. His first instinct will be to go for your arm to stop you from strangling him, and he will leave his face unprotected. Use those few moments to land a few really solid punches with your dominant hand. Edit. 
after seeing how many upvotes this has, I should point out that I don't have the slightest clue if it would actually work. I completely made it up in the time it took me to type the post. Holy shit, that's genius. Too bad I'd be the one on the ground in the fight. Yo where you live? I found this cool life hack I want to try. If you unplug the Ethernet cable from a Coinstar machine, it won't charge a commission. Not too suspicious to squeeze behind a big-ass money machine without someone questioning you. This should be fine if you act as if you belong there. Tip from up the list. Go in the day before with a tool bag and clipboard. Dress like a repairman. Mess around with it a few minutes pressing the buttons. Grab a small flashlight and look behind it and unplug it. If someone asks what you are doing, tell them there was a report that the connection was down. If they want to see paperwork, that is when you get your ass out of there. If they ask for paperwork, say it's in the truck then drive off. Struggling to write CV or can't get a particular job? Post fake job offerings on job websites for that position you're interested in and watch the CVs pour in, which you can then copy for your own advantage. The best public bathrooms in a city are in the expensive hotels. Totally, I work security in a fancy hotel and I'll only stop you if you look homeless. Photocopy the out-of-order signs at the computer lab so you can reserve one for yourself later if you have a problem with it being full. But if it's packed and there are people around you, how do you just plop down at an out-of-service computer and proceed to use it like normal? With confidence. You can use an empty Visa Rewards bank card to make a flight purchases. The cards cannot be run while in flight so all transactions are completed once you land, so you can receive any item you want for free. There is no way to track the failed transaction because your information is not tied to the card. My friend is a pilot, and I have done this for years. But it could be tied to your seat number which most likely is tied to your info. So, just works on Southwest Airlines then? For people that haven't flown Southwest, unlike most airlines, Southwest does not have assigned seating, and when you board, you pick whichever seat you like. You actually give your ticket to the gate person before even boarding, so there's no paper trail of any kind for the airline to figure out who was sitting where. If someone says, Do you love me? And you're about to have sex, say yes no matter what. When I was running low on food, I would eat the free breakfast at the hotel two minutes from my apartment. My strategy here was to walk to the elevator first, go up a floor, go back to ground, and conspicuously walk from the elevator to the breakfast. Need a tool only once by it, use it then return it to Home Depot. It's the Home Depot free rental policy. I work at Lowe's. We know, we all know you're doing this. Yes, but do you care? No way. This one isn't really illegal. But if you go to Dunkin' Donuts about 30 minutes before closing time, they will give you all their leftover donuts if you ask. If you don't, they just throw them away. Sadly, all the ones by me are open 24 hours long. Sai, I can't do unethical things now. Buy an ebook on Amazon, turn it into an ePub with Caliber, which creates another copy, then return the book. I've only ever used this for university textbooks. Those guys deserve it for the prices they put up. Edit, you have to strip DRM with a plugin. My dad once told me this when I started to apply to jobs and colleges. If there is a list of things that are posted on the site of what you are applying for, copy and paste them into your application with white text. If it's run over by a computer, it will catch it and send it to the interviewers, getting you an instant interview. If all applications are looked over by people, it won't be seen at the bottom, and won't matter to them. If a married person of the opposite sex is telling you the bad stuff about their spouse, you can bang them. Edit, for the married people who might be reading this. Turn towards your partner, not away. Resentment is the number one relationship killer. Read Gottman and take it to heart. My wife knows my history. I've even showed her this post. And actually if you're the single one who's taken advantage of this just remember it was never about you. Nobody's leaving their spouse for you. They just wanted to leave their spouse. 1. Sign up for 30-day free Netflix trial. 2. Cancel it on 30th day. 3. Create new random email address. 4. Repeat. If your lie embarrasses yourself, people are more likely to believe it. Cindy thinks you ate the last cookie? You couldn't have because you had awful diarrhea. The key is to be as hesitant to give this excuse as you can be. 
What other unethical life hack do you know of? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.